welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home, and we wish you a blessed Advent. Well, we want to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Today, we'll have on again for, uh, Dr. Ryan Hanning, who is a homesteader, a scholar, and you could go to his website, ryanhanning.com, mm. husband of one, yeah. father of 10 children. They're yeah. about to have a Christmas yeah. baby. We did that with Matthew. Yeah. Matthew was born December 28th, and uh, it's a game changer having a baby at Absolutely. Christmas and uh, learning what the Holy Family's all about. That's right. Um, last weekend, we did so many things, uh, but uh, at one of our grand children, Sophia Raquel Robinson, uh, made her first confession, yes. the Sacrament of Reconciliation, uh, that she took part in and, and received. And it was, it was amazing, a picture of her that, that we have. And when I saw the picture that came out, and, and really, I don't think it was just me saying it or, or seeing it, she looked different. Right, she did. I, and she's always beautiful, but she looked even more beautiful. I mean, her eyes were lit, her face, I mean, she was just so happy. And uh, the sacrament is just so, so powerful. And I, I got a quote from her. Uh, you know, she was asked how she felt about the sacrament and what happened to her. And she said, uh, it, it was like being muddy and dirty and then getting into the bath and getting all clean. Mm. Are you muddy? Are you dirty? Get into the bath of the sacrament of reconciliation. Be all clean. You know, maybe there's some people out there who just kind of think of this as we're going on. You haven't been to confession in many, many years. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, however many years, come and be made clean. It's, it's, it's not too late as long as you have life to, to come and, and to go there. Um, but but what, a, what a gift the Lord has given to us in the sacraments, in the rearing of children and families celebrating mm -hmm. these sacraments together. And this child knowing all the days of her life, she can go there and be made clean and be healed. Her sister Sienna, I remember when she made her first confession, she was in, in, went out shopping. She was like spinning around, just spinning with joy. Yeah. How great is the sacrament? Yeah, and it makes your family holy. I mean, that's the point, especially during this Christmas time. We all want to be wor worship the holy family and the beauty of Jesus and being born unto us, that precious child. And God wants to make your family holy also. Well, we want you to remember that EWTN, during the holidays, this time of year, we try to bring you so many special Christmas events, such as the Masses from Rome and Washington and the EWTN Family Christmas Special and so many other events at home with Jim and Joy also. Please don't forget to support us during the Christmas season. Now I wanna say that Jim and I, we also bring our time, our talent, and our treasure to the network. We're monthly supporters. Um, and what a blessing it is to support EWTN. Um, before we started working here, EWTN, the greatest gift that it gave to me, it catechized me. I'm a convert, and it's still catechizing me. And I personally love EWTN, and I ask you to join and be a part of the EWTN family because this network is being light and salt, and it's making a difference in the whole world. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Please don't go away. and we're delighted to have you here. Today we have Dr. Ryan Hanning. He is a homesteader and scholar, father of 10. You could go to his website, ryanhanning.com. Well, Dr. Hanning, it's wonderful to have you back. Now, I, mean, I want to run this by you. I'm thinking about an interview that I saw and I didn't catch the whole thing, just a part of it on this network called EWTN. I actually watch <laughs> EWTN. <laughs> And it comes on, and, and the part I caught was this woman from Denmark, and she was making commentary on, on Denmark, and mm -hmm. I, I think she was relating it to 
the lack of population sure, yeah. there, the early onset in history of contraception and abortion. And so she was sharing, you know, just about this. And uh, she said, you know, when I was reared as, as a young girl growing up, and uh, I don't know, maybe she was about uh, my age or so, maybe a little bit younger, but it seemed to go really way back, you know. She was reared, and they said to her, make love, not babies. This is what it's all about, to make love and not babies. And she talked about the mindset she was reared in, how you really, so many people bought into this. I tell you, it actually, I mean, I, I'm pretty experienced in this whole thing of false philosophies and so on, but it really just um, disturbed me greatly because I'm saying, well, they started this way before we did, but now we're here. And really what we're dealing with is a mindset, yep. a culture where people don't even think they're in rebellion against the truth. They really have bought into this like childlike faith. Yeah. Like this is what you do. You make love, not babies. If you really want to love, you don't do this. Yeah. Can you speak to this? That's <laughs> amazing. You know, ever since we sort of sterilized the human expression of sexuality, um, you know, we've, we've taken this reality away from it. That the, the fruit of human expression of sexuality is actually the gift of new life, mm -hmm. which is why you do it in marriage, which is why you want a, a committed relationship prior to you know, bringing that new life into the world. You know, this, <clears throat> this thought that somehow the idea is, is to, 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 to so on so quote, make love, but not have the fruit mm -hmm. of that, um, really it sterilizes the act itself. And the church yes. has taught this. It, all the way back to Didache, the church mm -hmm. has taught this. Um, the, the reality is, is that you're not then sharing yourself. Mm -hmm. You're holding something back. Um, you know, think of anything else in life. Imagine, you know, if, if you were to give somebody season tickets for last year, <laughs> that's not a good gift. You held something back. Yeah. Um, you know, we would never accept this, but yet yes. we somehow think that the most uh, personal, the most intimate way in which we would exchange a gift of ourselves with another person somehow is made more free by changing what it's actually made for. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's, that goes back to a, a whole fundamental misunderstanding of freedom and what our nature is. The truth is, is that human sexuality is a great gift. Mm -hmm. It's a powerful gift. It's a right. beautiful gift. It's so beautiful the church wants you to experience it as it truly is designed, which is to be a full expression of gift of yourself in a committed, yeah. married, loving relationship so that nine months later you can give it a new name. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that message, I think, a lot of people don't hear. Yeah. And, and they think that they're doing themselves a favor somehow by preventing that component of human sexuality, which mm -hmm. is, is the best part, it really is. I mean, when, when I hear myself introduced as father of nine, soon to be 10, you know, we never set out to have a huge family. Mm -hmm. we, we, we never did. Um, we've just been so open to the gift of life because every time we have a child and we hold this new gift of life in our hands, we just rejoice with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And now we see our children do this as well. Yes. Our children are, are more excited than we are for mm -hmm. the gift of, of new life that will be with us soon. And so I, I think we need to continue to, to really elevate the, the goodness of children, the goodness mm -hmm. yeah. of marriage, goodness of human sexuality. Yeah. I know somebody asked my wife one time when she was pregnant again, they said, oh, is this a good thing? And she said, how can it not be? How could it not be? Even right. if this was the worst crisis pregnancy ever, how could the gift of new life not be good? Even if the situations are difficult, Mother Mary bore Jesus in very difficult mm -hmm. circumstances, mm -hmm. on the run, fleeing for their lives. Right. Yeah. Imagine, yeah. And, and, and yet, Every gift of new life is a blessing. Right. Yeah. We must really honor and cherish yeah. it. Right. Well. And it's really, you know, in this culture of death, in this very sexually saturated world that we live in, it's, you really do feel like you're holding back all the forces of hell and death and darkness. You know, especially as we encounter our clients at the Pregnancy Medical Center uh -huh. who come in because he was the wrong guy. It was, I don't, you know, maybe I had multiple partners in the week. I don't know what's going on. And so the baby has to pay the price. Yeah. And so I have to end the life of this child so that I can live as free and reckless and irresponsible as I want to be. Yeah, you know, the truth is, is that all these first lessons of love, of trust, we learn within the context of a family. Mm -hmm. And if a family is broken, there needs to be another support network around it. You know, I, have, I have amazing parents. I really do. Uh, they're amazing grandparents. But God bless my grandparents who are there to pick up yes. some, of, some of the craziness that happened mm -hmm. in, in my life. You know, grandparents who, who I remember as a young child um, trying to figure out where I was going to go next. And I wanted to live with my grandparents because they ate meals together and went to church on Sunday. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> for me, I, I recognize that that held them together. Mm -hmm. So these, these lessons are learned within the family. And the more we remove ourselves from the, the truth of what a family provides, the more we're going to have these mistakes and the, the pain yeah. that comes along with it. Yeah. Well, speaking of families, how, and we're in <clears throat> Advent, we're in this beautiful season of Advent, how can families really enter into the Advent season and slow down 
Christmas, you know, everything's up and we're about, and then we're going to throw our Christmas tree away the day after Christmas. Right. How can we as a family enter into the Advent season? Yeah, you know, there's such a beautiful season of preparation. You know, our Eastern brothers and sisters call it, it's a fast. It really is. Mm -hmm. It's always been. Um, and like our Lenten fast, which is a time of preparation and focusing on, on how our hearts are ready to receive the Lord and the celebration of his resurrection, so too Advent is, is a fast in which we prepare ourselves to really enter into the mystery of Christ's incarnation. So I always remind families, and, and we try to do it in our own family as well, just to slow down, which is hard for me because I want to go fast. I want to do things, but just to slow down and really enter in. The readings from Sunday Mass are so instructive during the time of Advent. We, we hear the beautiful readings of Isaiah, and we, we hear within Isaiah the entire yearning and anxiousness of an entire nation waiting for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. That same type of yearning and anxiousness is what we ought to have, too, for the second coming of our Lord, who will come to us again at the end of time. It's the same yearning we should have as we enter into the mystery of his incarnation, his being made flesh uh, during this Christmas. And so we really try to make Advent not Christmas. We don't try to truncate it. Advent is Advent, Christmas is Christmas. So the way that we do this is <clears throat> we make sure the four weeks of Advent are really immersed in Scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, we spend a lot of time reading the Scriptures. We spend a lot of time in together Isaiah. Together as a family. Together as a family. Mm -hmm. uh, we intensify our morning prayer. Um, and then individually we ask the children as well to, to do some things during Advent that, that they might not otherwise do. So mm -hmm. they, they actually do a secret helper. Mm -hmm. They pick another child, they're going to be helpful during Advent. Mm -hmm. um, and we also celebrate St. Nick's Day. Yes. We go all out. Mm -hmm. You know, my family, uh, one side, on my mom's side is Italian, my dad's side is Austrian, so I can fight with myself. It's a really <laughs> nice, nice feature. Uh, but we do a big St. Nick's Day in, yes. in our feast day of Juan Diego, Our Lady Guadalupe. Yes. We had apprentices over. So all of Advent then becomes a preparatory celebration for really being able to welcome the gift of new life that will, mm -hmm. will come to us in the form of Jesus Christ at Christmas always in the mindset too that all of that what we're doing is to really honor the Lord mm -hmm. and to prepare our hearts to receive him at the moment of our death mm -hmm. or the moment he comes again. Right. And so diving into scripture, being more attentive to what we're doing for each other, really making sure that we're you know, entering into the mystery that God became man. As a family, we're just praying a little more. We light the candles mm -hmm. at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. you know, there's all these things we can do to sort of remind us of the season. So uh, every uh, first Sunday of Advent, we decorate the house. Um, but we remove all the baby Jesuses. He's yes, not there yet, yes. so our nativity is empty. Um, and our neighbors that come over think that's the strangest thing, and we explain to them he's not there yet, right? right. Um, and so there's all these ways that we really try to keep Advent Advent. Mm -hmm. yes. um, mm -hmm. So you have a nativity you know, w within your house. You have it outside? For the we Christmas? do have one outside as well, yeah. Christmas lights. You know, I know Advent, you don't put the baby in until mm -hmm. Christmas, but as I go through my community, sometimes people have the nativity scene out. Mm -hmm. It's not all that many of them, really. Um, and they have the Jesus there. And so they don't quite get that, you know. Mm -hmm. But the other day I was out going for my walk and this guy came out to, to get his paper, whatever, early in the morning. I said, hey, hey. So I said, I want to thank you for the nativity scene that you have oh, this yeah. out here and that you're doing this, you know. Because I, 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 we've not put one outside. So we, we really need to, to do that. And then we're moving into the Christmas season with the baby there, but there's nothing more, it's so powerful to me, mm -hmm. in a culture that denies the welcoming of children, a contraceptive, 60 million aborted, you know, okay. children culture, that here's this symbol of, uh, you know, Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, the magi, again, they got them in a little yep. bit early, but yeah. or, or if it's Christmas, Eve, and they're all looking one way, looking right here yep. mm -hmm. at this kid. What a, what a point of contradiction, what a scandal. Yeah, what, a, what, what a, a scandal the nativity What a beautiful scene. reminder of beautiful. the scandal yeah. <laughs> of, yeah. of not living up to the highest ideals of our faith. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the beautiful reality is that, that even despite that, God still comes to us. And it, you know, it's in these moments that yeah. um, this is why as Christians we can be of great hope and great joy. But you're right. I mean, we, we live in this world that's commercialized Christmas that wants to you know, truncate Advent mm -hmm. um, yeah. and really not enter into that time. And we need to stand against that. And we just need to be able to say that we're going to enter in these time before Christmas as really preparing our hearts and minds to yeah. celebrate the, the goodness of, of God's coming into the world, the goodness of the gift of new life, and then also preparing for his second coming. And then once we enter Christmas, Christmas is Christmas. Right. We celebrate for 12 days. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, in my Italian family, if you took down your Christmas decorations the day after Christmas, you would right. have gotten swapped. Because that's not going <laughs> to, you know, you can't right. do that. you got to yeah. leave them out. And to really enter into that season of, of Christmas, Christmas is not just one day, it's a mm -hmm. season. That's right. Um, and so in our home, we try to make Advent really <clears> a time <throat> of deep reflection, a time of preparation. Um, when we can, when we're able, we'll try to do a pilgrimage during Advent. Mm -hmm. um, 
we'll try to really enter into uh, the scripture a lot deeper, and we'll also try to do things um, that are more penitential as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like uh, <laughs> when I go to my place where I work at, it's a YMCA down here in Alabama, and I mean, Alabama has so many different Protestant expressions, mm -hmm. and there's a great commitment to, to faith and to the Lord. But I love going to the YMCA and for those 12 days at least saying, you know, Merry Christmas, yep. Merry Christmas. And they, they always like, you know, what are you talking about? Like, it's these guys want to know, they'll yeah. challenge you about it. And I always get to say, well, I'm Catholic. Yep. Okay. And so it's kind of like, oh, and everybody stops and kind of comes around and says, oh, I'm Catholic. And we, we do a whole season for Christmas. That Christmas is, a, it gives you opportunity to explain the whole thing and explain how we don't want to move away quickly from looking at this child, the God with skin, God made poor, God with a face. You know, we celebrate the incarnation and nativity, that this is God. We want to dwell upon that. We want to think upon that. And, you know, I don't find them running away from it. Right. I say, and we do this for an extended period of time, and, and they're kind of interested in it. You they're know? open to it, I think, because mm -hmm. they want to celebrate it more. Right? It's, a beautiful, it's a beautiful holiday. We still maintain it in our culture, praise mm -hmm. God. You know, I, I train our children not to say Merry Christmas until it's Christmas, so they say Happy Advent, Happy Advent which is right. very difficult. Mm -hmm. And so people say Merry Christmas <coughs> to them, and they'll very politely respond back, Happy Advent. Right. But just to <coughs> really yeah. be able to be refreshed and ready to enter into it. So on Christmas Day, um, our children will, will go through the house and fill the nativity, yeah. and mm -hmm. we'll celebrate Christmas as Christmas. But, you know, Advent being a time of deep introspection, a time of preparation to say, how can I welcome the Christ child into my life? How will I let this Christmas once again change who I am? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How will I let Christ, yeah. you know, penetrate the darkness of my sin in my life so that I can become the, the man, woman God has made me to be? Uh, this is, these are the questions of, of, mm -hmm. of Advent mm -hmm. that, that we must reflect on. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, Dr. Hanning, thank you so much for being with us. You've really enriched our lives in the EWTN family. God bless you. Blessed Advent. May you have a wonderful Christmas. Mm -hmm. Happy Advent to you as well. Thank you. Go to ryanhanning.com. Plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. Well, in a minute, we'll be chatting with Father Joseph, but first, we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from beautiful Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, we are approaching the end of Advent. How are the preparations of Christmas coming in Rome? Well, hi, Jim, and hi, Joy, and Merry Christmas, or at least almost. We are on the verge of the fourth Sunday of Advent, and actually just days before that beautiful celebration of the birth of Jesus seemingly this very small, innocent, helpless newborn. And yet his birth would affect humanity and the world for millennia to come, from his first breath to his last breath, and of course, beyond that, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you know, I was thinking the other day, I imagine Mary and Joseph never even gave a thought to the fact that this very humble scene, this manger in this small place called Bethlehem, would be replicated two millennia later all around the world, in schools and homes and churches, of course, in public squares. They probably never even imagined it. In any case, the Vatican, like everyone else, is putting its final touches on the, the Christmas preparations. You can probably see the Christmas tree in St. Peter's Square behind me, and next to that is the nativity scene. And then last Sunday, there was a tradition, very, very beautiful one, uh, called Bambinelli Sunday. Last Sunday, of course, was Gaudete Sunday, the third Sunday of Advent. And this was a tradition begun in 1969 by Pope St. Paul VI. He invited on Gaudete Sunday all of the children of Rome, and now they come from all over Italy, to come to St. Peter's Square and bring the little statues of baby Jesus that will be in the nativity scenes in their homes and perhaps in their schools. And so they did just that on Gaudete Sunday, and the Pope blessed all of their statues. And that is a tradition that has been carried on now for 50 years, of course, need I say, Bambinelli is the Italian word for the little baby Jesus statue. <clears throat> now Christmas in Rome, it, it is a very beautiful, special, spiritual, and even a, ma a magical time. There's all the traditional touches of, 
uh, secularism, if you will, consumerism. There's lights and store lights and trees and music. But actually, if you get to Rome, by the way, at Christmas, if you can come, please do so. But you could spend your entire vacation just visiting churches, basilicas, etc., and their nativity scenes. Some of them are huge and many of them replicate entire villages. You might find Bethlehem recreated in a church. You might find a town in Italy, but in one corner of that little mountain town, you'll find the little nativity scene of Jesus. So there's also, by the way, the exhibit, not far from where I'm standing, of the 100, tree, uh, 100 nativity scenes, and I'm, I'm gonna write about that on my blog. It's open till about mid-January. And of course, if you're in Rome, you're gonna have a number of chances to see uh, Pope Francis. Christmas Eve, of course, the Vigil Mass in St. Peter's Basilica. Christmas Day, he recites his Urbi and Orbi message and blessing, and that's in St. Peter's Square. New Year's Eve, December 31st, there are Vespers and uh, Te Deum of Thanksgiving for the year just passed, that's in the Basilica. And again, the following morning, January 1st, the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. There's a Papal Mass in St. Peter's Basilica. So lots to do, but before I go, I want to wish all of you a very beautiful, special, spiritual, and yes, even magical Christmas. God bless. Joan, that was so beautifully done, maybe too much done, I feel like I don't even have to go. Like I've gotten <laughs> kind of there in Rome with you. Thank you for your love for Rome and, and for the church and for Advent and Christmas. Father, it's always wonderful to have you here. Your thoughts, your reflections. Yeah, there's a beautiful family here from Pittsburgh in the audience, and they knew Father Angelus, who was with us for six years. And Father Angelus was a missionary to Papua New Guinea among the primitive people there. And he told us a story, the first part's a little bit humorous, how when the missionaries had arrived there, of course they wore shoes, but the natives didn't wear shoes, so they're the natives, their feet were quite calloused and hard. Yeah. So when the missionaries took off their shoes, one of them grabbed it and he said, well, what's that feel like? The other one asked him, he said, kind of like a, a cooked a sweet potato. <laughs> 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 but, but then he went on to say that when Christmas happened, they had this nativity scene and the people would just be there all Christmas day, just mm. gazing at the infant in the manger. Mm. And that's really what Advent, what Christmas is about, to remind us annually, and not just to remind us, but actually to experience mm -hmm. anew that the Word became flesh, as Mother said, for you, mm -hmm. for you, yeah. that for all mankind, but in a way he united himself with each of, each of us individually mm -hmm. in the Incarnation. Well, I didn't even want to comment on any of that because it was yeah. just perfectly <laughs> said. Please close us in a prayer and with a blessing. Hail and blessed be the hour and moment when the Son of God was born of the most pure virgin in Bethlehem at midnight in piercing cold. Mm -hmm. In that hour vouchsafe, O oh my God, to hear my prayers and grant my desires through the merits of our Lord Jesus Christ and of his most pure mother. Amen. What a blessing you are, Father. So thank you for being with us. Don't forget to tune in on Christmas Eve for the EWTN Family Christmas Special at 6 p.m. Eastern. May the remainder of this Advent, upcoming Christmas in the season, be the best mm. of your life. Keep it on EWTN. You're an important part of this family, and you're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Bye now.